Can you hear me? Good? Hey, makeup show, good morning. Holla, babies, holla. There you go, louder, let's hear it. Good morning. Get those credit cards out, I want to see things melting. Love you, mean it. No, really. Hi, guys. And you thought this was going to be a quiet entrance into the morning. <laughs> Boy, were you wrong. <laughs> My name is Kevin James Bennett. Um, I'm a makeup artist. Um, I am an award-winning makeup artist. And I'm a product whore. <laughs> By the way, anybody get offended very easily here? Yeah? Get the hell out. Because I have makeup artist Tourette, so a couple of... Do you have a seven-second delay on that, by the way? We're screwed. It's all good. Um, we're doing makeup today, and we're going to talk about trends. Um, and I'm here with my, my lovely friends from Naked Cosmetics, because they make these incredible little jars of love, these little pigments, these little oxidized micas, and calcium borosilics, and all these other fancy words. Basically, they're just like a lot of glam and a little bit of a jar. So we're going to talk about how to take these things and use them multiple ways. Um, and you know me, I don't like leaving anything the way that it's supposed to be. I always constantly try to break things. You know, it's like, well, can we make it do this or can we make it do that? And if we can't, I will force it because I am determined. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about some of the trends. Now, some of the trends that I saw, especially from New York and from Paris, there was a lot of metallics again for fall. Difference being, it wasn't your typical bronzes. It wasn't your typical golds. We were seeing a lot of jewel tones in metallic. And the really interesting thing was, they took the traditional, okay, I'm gonna have to like, smoky eye. God, I said it okay, and I, I didn't burn. Um, <laughs> you're laughing, you know what I mean. It's like, I, I can't even say that word anymore. I hate it so much. But <laughs> they took the typical smoky eye and they actually made it colorful and rich and deep and metallic, which is something that we weren't seeing a lot of. It was very interesting because for spring 2013, it was all about brows. It was all about winged eyeliner. It was about a nude lid. It was all about strong brows and a strong lip. Now we flip over into fall, and what they did was they took the brown, they pushed it back a little bit, wasn't as important. They came into this look with this whole smoky eye again, but they made it very, very metallic, very pearlized. I don't mean shimmery, shimmery. Like it wasn't sparkle, because you know, and we're friends by now, right? We're close. I can be honest with you. If you're over the age of 14 and you're putting glitter on your face, stop it. Stop it. No glitter. Glitter is for kids. So the nice thing was we were seeing this whole interpretation of a smoky eye, but looking much more, for lack of a better word, fun, interesting, different. Um, what I also like is the fact that the naked uh, pigments, you could do a lot of really cool things with them. I don't know if you know that they're doing a lot of beautiful like ombre nails and beautiful, this stuff, you mix this, they, they actually have a clear nail base that you can buy. You can make like the most gorgeous metallic ombre nails mixing a couple of these babies together. I mean, it's like you could do so much with the pigments as opposed to what you can do with pressed color. So I really have a lot of fun with these. I create highlighters, I create bronzers. We do all kinds of things with eyes. Um, you can mix some of the lighter colors and more metallic pearlized like the um, champagne tones and bronze tones with body lotion. They're gorgeous, especially with summer get a little bit of a glow and then like put a little bit in your body lotion at home and like go out that night and let me tell you, you're gonna be lucky. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that, but um, so anyway. So this is the gorgeous Brooke. Everybody say hi Brooke. Hi, Brooke. We're gonna show you, um, I'm personally really into this whole like burgundy khaki thing this fall because I'm loving that people are being brave and doing burgundy around the eyes. So I am loving like the burgundy tones, because you got to be really careful with burgundy tones around the eye, because they can make you look kind of tired and a little crack a lacky you know? But the thing is, if you do them correctly, they are so stunning. So I want to give you guys a little bit of realness with a little bit of burgundy, because I don't know, have any of you played with me at these little seminars before? 
you, you know I always fly by the seat of my pants and I always do things that are potentially dangerous and can really screw up because good makeup artists, you know what I mean. If you don't make, guys, if you don't push yourself, if you don't try new things, you don't learn anything. That's a big problem for me because um, I don't want to work with other makeup artists that are not willing to extend themselves to learn new technology, to try new techniques, because you know what? Those are the cookie cutter, those are the cookie cutter Craigslist, model mayhem, fake up artists that you don't want to be. You want to be the person that's pushing yourself all the time. It makes you better at what you do. You're not necessarily going to do all the crazy stuff all the time, because let's face it, 97% of our work is, I want to look natural. Yes? Yes, do we hear that? Can we be, again, we're close, right? Baby, after the age of 16, natural don't work. When you're 40 years old and you want to look natural, we're going to make you look neutral, honey, because making you look natural is going to take five hours. <laughs> Not good. So, I, someone just fainted in the back. <laughs> Can we get her some water? No, sorry. <laughs> So I want you guys to really get out there and play. Because the thing is, by doing those crazy, maybe avant-garde, maybe editorial looks, you can then, now that you know that you can do that, you can bring it back and reinterpret it into a more commercial look. But the thing is, if you don't know how to do the way out version beautifully, that's another thing, we need to talk about this, kids. When somebody says editorial to you, you do not run for the green feather eyelashes and the purple eyeshadow. It's called editing. It's called restraint. When you do avant-garde makeup, even, you have to do beautiful makeup. No matter how crazy you get, it's got to be pretty because if it's not, what does it become? You know it, kids. Say the H word with me. Halloween. <laughs> Um, so we should start doing stuff here because I just realized they only give me 45 minutes and I talk too much. So um, are we okay with that? We're going to do that today? We're good on that? Okay, we're going to do eyes first because I'm a slob, because I work fast. And um, I suggest that you do that especially when you're working with loose pigments because when you work with loose pigments, you're going to have a little bit more drop off than you normally would using a pressed powder product. So if you do your complexion work already, what's going to happen is you're going to have all this drop off. You go to clean it up. You're going to have to remove all of it and reapply it. Why waste the time? It's just easier starting with the eyes. Do a nice clean up in aisle six, you know, and then do a gorgeous complexion. So we're going to start with eyes. But actually, we're going to start with a little bit of prep. We're going to do a little moisture first. You guys know about this the fabulous universal skincare from Naked. You all got to go look at this stuff. This stuff is amazing. It's got all kinds of organics and honey and fabulosity, and it basically can be used on any skin type. So you don't have to worry about if they're oily, if they're dry, if they're whatever. It's just going to give them moisture. They need moisture right now. They don't necessarily need oil. They need moisture. So prior to makeup, we want to make sure that the skin has got a lot of hydration because a hydrated skin is going to look better once you put the foundation on top of it. So this has got all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff. Um, and it's very, 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 we're going to use the N-word, natural. So we want to keep this at a climate that is normalized. If you put it to extreme heat or extreme cold because it doesn't have a lot of preservatives in it, you're going to damage it. So this is like a little precious jewel. So take good care of it, okay? If you don't, I will seek you out. So here we go, a little bit. By the way, notice what I'm doing, kids? No fingers in the jar. Bad, bad, bad. Palette knife. You all probably have one, right? So, now, I don't know about you guys, but I like to put my moisturizer on my client, my model, with a brush because Heaven forbid they come in and their skin is not in the best condition, which is usually always. Um, I want to get almost a mask level of moisturizer on them. So while I'm busy doing their eyes, their skin is like just soaking in all the moisture and getting much better. So when I get to foundation, blush, bronze, all that other stuff later, their skin is going to be in amazing condition. So put your moisturizer on nice and heavy first. Let it sit there.
Okay, so we got our moisturizer on. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our, where are you? Where's my clear base? Now this is the clear base for lips. What this basically is, this is lip moisturizer or a lipstick base. This is what you can mix all the pigments in to make your own customized lipsticks. It's also an amazing lip conditioner and it's great even for guys because it has a very low luster. It's not really shiny, shiny, glossy. So if you want to give guys a little bit of lip moisture on camera, you don't have to worry about this. It works brilliantly. So. Now the reason I'm doing this is, as we did with the skin, we're saying if we prep with a lot of moisture beforehand, we do the same thing with the lips, because a lot of times people will sit down and their lips are not in the best condition. Put a lip conditioner on them first, so by the time you're done with the eyes, your face is gonna be in shape, your lips are gonna be in shape, your entire makeup is gonna look so much better because you've already prepped. So, done and done. Next on the hip parade would be eyes. Now, what I'm gonna do is, Here's where we're going to fly by the seat of our pants again. How many of you have a gel eyeliner at home? How many of you are terrified of gel eyeliner? Well, be, be even more scared because I'm going to use it as an eyeshadow base because I want this to look really deep and really dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a gel eyeliner as my eyeshadow base. Then I'm going to put my mineral pigment over the top of it. And what will happen is the mineral pigment will also have a nice grip to it and it will have a really great depth. So. Another use for your gel eyeliners. Also, what's really cool is you could take any of these loose mineral pigments by Naked and mix them into a little bit of gel eyeliner and make a sparkling, shimmering eyeliner. It's like so super duper duper. Actually, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Why don't we mix a little bit of the gel eyeliner with a little bit of the color I'm going to use anyway. By the way, this is the, the Urban Rustic stack because they have all the beautiful burgundies and purples and khaki greens and gorgeous colors that I like for fall. So I'm going to take a little bit of Urban Rustic and I'm going to mix it into a gel eyeliner. Just a tiny bit. Now, this is important, kids. This is where you're either going to do this really well or you're going to screw it up. Two brushes. One brush loaded with gel eyeliner mixed with pigment, okay? One clean, empty brush. This is the only way this works. Close the lid. We lay down the gel mixed with pigment. We take the clean brush and we start buffing immediately. Because if you wait, this is going to start drying up and you're going to have a mess on your hands. Oh, I'm really liking this. Don't you love when we discover new things together? Now, guys, I mean, look at, oh, you want to know something? I'm like living for this right now because basically we have created a smoky eye, open up, in a nano minute using nothing but some gorgeous burgundy loose pigment and a little bit of gel eyeliner. And what's going to happen is because this is a gel eyeliner, it's a waterproof. So when it dries, it is going to lock that pigment down. So you're not going to have to worry about it. It's going to stay where you put it, which is great. So you can make any color combination you want doing this. So let me do the other eye. Did you use a, um, a brown gel eyeliner? It kind of doesn't hurt that my model has absolutely stunning eyes, too, but you know, it's like, well... Kevin. Yeah. Did you use a brown or black gel eyeliner? Did I use what? A brown or black gel eyeliner. Actually, I used a purple. Because I knew I was going to use burgundy, so I used a purple. And then I used a really dark, gorgeous, shimmering, burgundy, loose mineral pigment. Oh man, I am loving this. Y'all can go home now. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I want to be alone with this for a minute. 
But guys, you see how easy this is when you do a tube brush? And I just love like the beautiful luster you get from the pigment. It's just so nice. Let me see, open up. Ooh, girl. Kevin. Look at you. Um, hello, Kevin. I'm I here, was asked, was just asked a question. I'm hearing something out there. I'm hearing a voice. What yes, am I hearing? Yes, sir. I just want to thank you personally because I love pigment more than using a palette. So I just want to thank you, appreciate that you use, pa use pigment more than palette. Well, thank you for the love, baby. And, and, and <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Peter Esty over there. Hi, Peter. Is loving you for loving pigment. Yes. <laughs> but my next question is, is that... Okay, you got to talk louder. Where okay, are you? Okay, I'm right here. <laughs> okay, where are okay, you? Okay, I'm right here. Oh, there you are. Okay, baby. Okay. My question is, when you're using pigment, what is kind of the greatest challenge of working with it when you're mixing more than two colors? What challenge? <laughs> as far as blending. Baby, you know what you do? You get these. These are, these are from the art supply store. These are wax paper palettes. Okay. Take a little bit of pigment, a little bit of pigment. Take your spatula. Grind. Gotcha. Grind it, baby. Make your colors. Mix. Play. Play in the kitchen. It's like, make all new things. Okay, you gotta, yeah. you gotta. Okay, look up my love. Thank you. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of that same mix under the eye. Okay, wait a second. This is a little bit dry, I don't wanna hurt you. Yeah, guys, be conscious of something, please. When you've had this brush exposed to air for a little bit, it starts getting a little bit stiff. So as you're working on the model, Wipe it off and start with a fresh supply. Otherwise, you're going to be poking the daylights out of her. And unless you're really tight with her, she might hit you. Are we having fun yet? Are you noticing that we're getting this gorgeous eye makeup done and I've only used one color so far? How scary is that? That you could get all this gorgeous using one color. And that when you buy a set, you're getting six gorgeous colors in one set, so you could do like so much gorgeous, it's almost, it's almost illegal. You okay, my love? Ooh. That looks pretty. That looks very pretty. Um, did I bring sponges? Yes, I did. By the way, guys, don't waste your time. If you ran out of them at Alcone, just order them. The only sponges you should own. By the way, just saying. Shout out to my Vinny. Okay. So now I got all of that stuff happening there. Is that my blender? No, it's not my blender. That's my blender. So when you're done blending, guys, what do you do? I didn't hear you. There you go. Blend more. When you're done blending, you blend more. Now, we've got that all set on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice clean brush and we're going to go directly into the same pigment color. Because now we want magic. We've got gorgeous, now we want magic. Oh, that hurts me, that's so pretty. Okay, and then we go back in with our clean brush. With my clean brush, and we blend it. Open up. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Am I the only one feeling this? It's like it's pretty, pretty. I love this color. Damn, I love this color, Peter. This is a good color. Now, you guys are noticing I'm going like this. Word of advice, when you're working with loose pigments, you do not want to do the windshield wiper. Because what happens is when you do the windshield wiper, what happens? Flies all over the place. Also, when you pat it in, the minerals then grab onto the lid. You're actually, if you look at them almost in a microscopic level, they kind of like, they're unsettled when they're loose. And when you pat them in, they sort of like interlock and meld together again. So it's a good idea to do it this way so you don't have them all over the place. Here we go.
Blend, 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 blend. Okay. Okay, always check too, because you want to make sure that you've got everything where it belongs. I want to add in a tiny bit more interest to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a beautiful burnished gold. Is this from the same set? <gasps> this is. This is from Urban Rustic too. Love it. This is a beautiful, almost slightly antique greenish gold, which is going to be a nice little compliment. And when I say compliment, when you do compliment your colors, that means that you're doing a color that is exactly the opposite. So if I'm doing a cool color, which is burgundy, which has got a lot of purple-blue base, I'm going to take this gold color that's got this greenish base, so it's going to be complementary, but the two together are going to look gorgeous. And I'm going to do a little bit of highlight right on the inside corner of the eye. Okay, now we're going to go in again. Clean brush, blend. You see? Shut the front door. This girl's too pretty. Um, shall we throw caution to the wind? Shall we just be totally stupid? This is the most gorgeous dark olive green. I'm like, I'm, I'm living for this set. This little tower of power here, all I'm going to use all fall. I love this. I'm going to take just a drop of this, the tiniest little soup zone, and throw it in the outside corner. Now we get a blend, blend, blend again. You see? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of like this. This is, and this is all one group of colors. I'm loving this. this is all in one little group. Okay, we should do some liner and some mascara and move on to the rest of the face. Otherwise, I'm not going to finish in time. Good morning. Okay, let's just blend that a little bit more. Okay. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I want to keep this pretty simple. I don't want to make this crazy. So I'm just going to get some black eyeliner real quick, just a little black eyeliner on there. Um, Hmm. Yeah, we'll use this one. I love this. Oh, by the way, art supply store. Brilliant. Five bucks. Best way to keep your pencils. How good is that, right? You know what? When in doubt, I always reach for my... No, you know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm a creature of habit. Are you guys like that? That you, you carry five million things, you always reach for the same stuff? That damn Stila Onyx coal pencil? It's the only pencil that I actually have ever had to replace a couple of times because I, I use it up. So yeah. Also the thing is I like using cold pencil when I'm using loose pigment because you could actually take the cold pencil and blend with the loose pigment on the eye. So you could actually get some really nice effects. Like if you want to do a really cute, let's say you're doing a very neutral, like lighter eye, you could do a really cute cut crease with your cold pencil blend it in and then throw the pigment over the top of it and just naturally adds the shading underneath. It is so easy, it is so simple, it's so good. So good. How good is it, Kevin? It's so good. Okay, I'm just going to hit a right tight to the lash line. Give it a little blend. You see? Yeah, see, that happens in a second when you do that. We love that. 
And the other nice thing is, coal pencils blend really beautifully over loose pigments because they want to be together, kind of. They want to play. If you use like, if you use a waterproof liner or one of those gel liner pencils, it grabs and it skips. Using a nice coal pencil with your loose pigment is always going to give you a much smoother, more blended finish. You're not going to get a hard line. You know, if you want a hard line, use a liquid, use a pen. What I also like is when you put the coal pencil over, it sort of picks up a little bit of the pigment and it mixes it into the pencil. So your pencil now suddenly has that little bit of shimmer from your loose pigment. See? Yep. You see, look at me. Okay, and you know what? We're gonna go there, why not? Look up, my love. You okay? Damn, you're tall. I wanna get in there and not hurt you here. You okay? Okay, I want you to blink hard. Okay, you know what that does, guys? Love this, with a coal pencil, so you don't have to go up here because they freak out when you do that. Get under there with a cold pencil, do the black line, make them blink really hard a couple of times, it transfers to the top lid underneath automatically. So you don't have to get under there and have your model like... Okay. Okay, you gotta tilt your head, there you go, now look up. You're just too darn tall. Okay, you comfortable here? Am I, have I hurt you yet? No, good. Really, I usually do, I'm sorry. There we go. And of course I made a mess underneath just a little bit because that's what I do. And you know what? Um, no, this is a new tube of mascara, so we're just gonna give you this one because I don't feel like using a disposable right now because you don't have time. You'll like this stuff, it's really good. Look down, don't close. A Little bit of mascara. Now the thing is, I'm not going to do false eyelashes on this look. Does anybody know why? Remember what I said earlier about editing? If I throw a pair of false eyelashes on this very deep, dark, smoky metallic eye, what's it gonna look like? Drag. Not good. So I wanna have all the attention on the beautiful pigment colors and her gorgeous eyes. I don't wanna drag all the attention away from them by putting a pair of false eyelashes on here. You see? And you see with all that darkness, that's plenty. You don't need more. Oh, I'll get that to you in a minute. But remember, that one's yours, it's a lovely pink. Um, time for a little cleanup, kids. Okay. Okay, how did I do that? There we go, okay, got it. Boom, what next, what next, what next, what next? Um, a little bit of primer real fast. By the way, all the moisturizer I put on earlier, it soaked right in while I was working on the eye. So her skin is now really beautiful and soft and ready to go. Okay, a little bit of foundation. Okay, I'm gonna teach you guys a trick now. It has nothing to do with Naked Cosmetics, so Peter's gonna yell at me. Don't yell at me. See what I just did there? I made a mess, right? Oops, I did, now what do I do? Oh, here it is. Take a nice synthetic foundation brush. Setting spray. You know how they tell you, it's like, I'm gonna use a damp sponge? Wrong. You're, not th you're doing nothing but watering down your foundation. You want your foundation to...
Okay, look up for a second. And then what you do is, before you had that one side dry, go in with a dry brush, buff it. That was a bonus, flawless foundation in a nano minute, right? There you go, boom. How easy is that? I use Scandinavia. I'm like, I'm a cre foundation, um, I'm using Graftobian. I really like their HD foundation. Especially when you've got a model that's got gorgeous skin, you don't have to like worry about using heavy duty. And they got some beautiful colors. I mean, this color, look at, turn your head that way. How perfect is that? And I got that right out. I didn't even have to like mix. Okay, turn back. Give it a quick buff. Now I'm going to take, where are you? Oops, there it is. Is this from the same one again? No. This is from Desert Sunset. But you know what? Now I'm going to take the bronze from Urban Rustic. What the hell? We're using that tower. Why not, right? No, actually, I like this color better, though. This is from the Desert Sunset Tower. It's the Tower of Sunset, yes. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of this pigment, tiny amount. Yeah. What? Oh, there is? Okay, we're not gonna use this one. I didn't realize that, darn it. 10 minutes, five minutes? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so you know what, we're going back to this, we're going back to bronze. I almost missed. Thank you so much. I almost messed up. That one has, I didn't realize that that one has borosilic in it. Borosilic calcium. Borosilic, calcium borosilic fibers are amazing because they're like glitter, but they're better because they're three dimensional. So they sparkle no matter where light hits them. They got some gorgeous stuff. They actually, you actually have a group, a tower of nothing but borosilic uh, crystal in different colors. Um, they're sort of like somebody else's diamond powder, but they're like a lot cheaper. Did I say that? I didn't say that. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of the bronze. Right? Taking that same wet brush. I'm using my model's face as my blending palette. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So again, we're taking a little bit of the loose pigment color. We're making her look kind of like stupid. And then we're taking the damp brush that we, used our, that we blended our foundation with and we're blending it back. Oh my God, that's a pretty color on you. Girl, you gotta have this tower. You gotta get these colors. Oh, are you still here? Hi. <laughs> now, I want you to be aware of something, guys. The thing is now we've done all of this beautiful color here. It's kind of time to stop and put the brakes on, okay? Sort of blend this out a little bit more so I don't have any lines. Open up, let me see. So what I want to do now is, I don't want to do anything extreme on her lip. I want to do something really soft, really nude. So I'm taking from the Desert Sunset. This one I can use because I do love the fact that this has got the, the shimmer in it, that beautiful calcium borosilic. And I'm going to put this on the lip. Because the thing is, you don't want to have big earrings and a big necklace. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating, where are you? There you are. I'm creating a nice nude lip, but because this is such a beautiful sparkly evening look, I'm using something that's got a little bit more zhuzh to it. So I'm sort of almost neutralizing her lips slightly, but not a lot, a lot.
mush. Ooh. And they're telling me one minute. Okay, hold on. Can you get this out without hurting you? Oh God, do you want to grab that? Okay. Bend, shake. Bring it back. Hold on. We're done. Yay! Did y'all have fun? Yeah? Okay.